keeping you an exclusive look at how vaccines will be handled and distributed here locally. 13 investigates reporter Joe Bartels live for us tonight at the UNLV School of Medicine to explain all this. And Joe, this is so crucial to get ourselves out of this mess. Yeah, it really is, Todd, and you said it. It's not a matter of if, but when a COVID-19 vaccine becomes available, the Pfizer vaccine needs to be kept really cold, sub-zero, in fact, and UNLV just got a cool new tool to handle it. It's about as small as a household fridge, but this sub-zero machine will make a big difference when the Pfizer vaccine or similar COVID vaccine are ready. Interestingly requires a minus 81 degrees Celsius, for those of you who don't remember um, your metric system, uh, that's minus 90 degree Fahrenheit. In other words, really cold. Dr. Michael Gardner with the UNLV School of Medicine says the Pfizer vaccine uses new technology called mRNA and needs special handling to be kept so cold. This freezer can hold up to 50,000 doses, which will turn UNLV into a hub for storage and vaccine distribution. And there are you know, a limited number of those freezers across the country. There's a limited number of those freezers in Nevada and in Las Vegas in Clark County. Officials say the race for a vaccine is unlike anything the world has ever seen. Typically, the process takes years. A viable COVID vaccine from development to distribution has taken about 10 months. A total of six U.S.-based vaccines are being investigated. Four are nearly done with late-stage testing. The day after... One of these vaccines is approved. We'll be shipping vaccines to the American people. And within a day after that, uh, we'll be seeing those vaccines injected uh, into Americans. Here's how Operation Warp Speed distribution will look like. Pfizer plans to pack kits ready to go and ship through FedEx and UPS along with dry ice to keep it cold. The Moderna vaccine will be sent to a facility to be paired with syringes and needles, then sent through shipping partners. From there, it's on to existing vaccine distribution points like hospitals, pharmacies, and even mobile drive through events. Both the Pfizer and the Moderna, uh, the two, two that we've been hearing so much about recently, both require two doses and that logistically is more difficult. Dr. Gardner says the two doses are given a few weeks apart, which means mobilizing the effort twice. 250 million Americans or so would need to be vaccinated in order to achieve herd immunity, a point in which the general population would be considered safe from uncontrolled spread. That means we need 500, syringes, 500 million syringes, 500 million needles. Um, uh, clearly, this is a vaccination effort like we've never done before. Other vaccines, including one from Johnson & Johnson, requires a single shot but doesn't have to be kept nearly as cold. It can be kept in medical chillers like this one, which are more widely available. Vaccine is not as far along in the testing process, though. Uh, certainly by Memorial Day, I'm hoping, you know, in April, that we can be, uh, you know, start rolling this out. And with a little luck, we'll be able to vaccinate a lot of folk, you know, by midsummer. Authorities say the vaccines will be distributed in phases with healthcare workers, those in nursing homes, first responders, and high risk people first, teachers, school staff, and older adults next, and then the general public. And medical experts say that safety has not been compromised with the speed of the development of these vaccines. Of the ones we know about so far, they've shown an effective rate of north of 90%, which is pretty amazing. That rivals the same safety and effectiveness as the measles vaccine. Reporting live, Joe Bartels, 13 Action News. Yeah, Joe, thank you. That was a great look at the challenges that lie ahead.